And so I invite you to take God's Word and turn with me to the book of Philippians, to Philippians chapter 2. I want us to look tonight at a very familiar text. Philippians chapter 2, beginning in verse 5, you are very aware of it. And I know tonight as I stand before you that there is nothing that I can bring out of the Word that you have not already heard, that I have not already expounded. And tonight it is to bring to our remembrance this which we already know of the great humiliation of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the great exaltation that has accrued to Him because He humbled Himself unto death. The message tonight will be a very simple message, and I trust it will be a very sweet message as well. Philippians chapter 2, beginning in verse 5. Have this attitude in yourselves which was also in Christ Jesus. And he tells us that we are to live the way of the cross. We are to live as Christ died. We are to live with humiliation and self-denial. And we are to live with obedience to the will of God. And he will now take the cross, beginning in verse 6, and set it before us again, not in an evangelistic way, but addressing this to the church, to the believers in the church at Philippi and reminding the believers there, and He does so with us tonight, that we are to have the very same mindset that was in the Lord Jesus Christ that led Him to the cross. We are to live every moment of every day with this very same attitude. Attitude is everything. It is at the very heart of our lives. Our actions flow out of our attitudes. And so, He calls us in the very depth of our heart and our soul. He says, have this attitude in yourselves, which was also in Christ Jesus, who although He existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped, but humbled Himself, taking the form of a bondservant, and being made in the likeness of men, being found in appearance as a man, He humbled Himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore also God highly exalted Him and bestowed on Him the name which is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee will bow, of those who are in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and that every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. These verses remind us that no one ever started out so high and ended up so low as the Lord Jesus Christ. And no one ever humbled themselves more than the Lord Jesus Christ. No one ever put themselves under the will of God more than Jesus Christ. And no one ever lived a life of obedience to the will of God more than our Savior. And no one ever paid a greater price for that obedience by going all the way to death on a cross than the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the very personification of what He said, He who humbles Himself shall be exalted. And having humbled Himself, God has highly exalted Him and bestowed upon Him a name that is above every name. 
tonight as we come to the Lord's table. We want to remind ourselves that our Lord and Savior went from a king's throne to a criminal's death. He went from the praises of angels in glory to the profanity of an angry crowd at Golgotha. He gave up the riches of glory to wear the rags of our iniquity and our sin. God took on human flesh. Majesty became a man. The sovereign became a servant. Omnipotence became obedient. Deity suffered death. This is what these verses tell us, and it calls upon each and every one of us to be self-deniers, to be men and women who have died to self, even as Christ died for us, and to live in such a way as He lived and died, to live in radical obedience to the will of God and to give ourselves completely to it. Tonight, as we look at these verses, I want us to really uh, delve into verses 6 through 11. It's a very simple outline. There is the humiliation of Christ and the exaltation of Christ. The humiliation of Christ in verses 6 through 8, and then the exaltation of Christ, verses 9 through 11. In verses 6 through 8, we see this these stair steps that descend downward from the heights of glory down to the depths of, of Calvary. And then in 9 through 11, we see the stair steps that lead back up to the very right hand of God the Father. Let's consider first His humiliation. Beginning in verse 6, as I said, no one ever started out so high and no one ever humbled themselves so much, and no one ever ended up so low as the Lord Jesus Christ. And beginning in verse 6, and concluding at the end of verse 7, there are seven steps downward. Down, 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 down. Go these steps from the heights of glory to the depths of the cross. And I want to highlight these for you and draw these to your attention. Step number one, beginning in verse six, is step number one is God, is deity. Notice how this begins. Who although Jesus Christ, Christ Jesus, the end of verse five, who although he existed in the form of God. That's where this story begins, the story of the cross. It begins with Christ in the form of God. Uh, he is not a mere man. He is God, full deity. And the form of God refers to the very essence of God that He possessed, the very nature of God that He possessed and does possess fullness of God. As I think of the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is the very cornerstone of the church and is the very cornerstone of this church, I always remember the deity of Christ with these five words that help etch this into my mind. And the first word is worship. Jesus Christ is God because He receives the worship that belongs to God alone. When Thomas saw the nail-pierced hands of Christ in the upper room in John 20, verse 28, Thomas fell down before the risen Christ and he said, My Lord and my God. He receives the worship that belongs to God alone. Second, He performs the works that only God can perform. He has spoken everything into being out of nothing. Only God can do that, yet Christ did that. He forgives sin, and only God can forgive sin. He upholds all things by the word of His power, and only God presides over all the affairs 
of providence. He will be the final judge on the last day before whom every lost man will hear the sentence read from this Lord Jesus Christ. And only God can stand in that place of judgment. Attributes. He possesses the very attributes that God possesses. He is holy as God is holy. He is righteous as God is perfectly righteous. And names. He is called the very names of God. He is I am the very name that God took for Himself. I am who I am. And it is Jesus who has said, I am the light of the world. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus Christ takes the very names of God to Himself and they fit. And finally, the word equality. In so many texts, He has assigned a place of absolute equality with God. In fact, this very verse, verse 6 that says that He did not regard... What's the next word? Equality with God. Could anything be any more clear tonight for anyone who has a Bible in front of them with black type on white paper? That Jesus Christ is equal with God the Father. And so for these five words, worship, works, attributes, names, equality, Jesus Christ is God, very God. And that's where this begins he is co-equal and co-eternal with Father, the God the Father. He existed in the form of God. He has always existed in the form of God. He now exists in the form of God. And He shall forever exist in the form of God. He is the One who was and who is and who shall be forever. And so this begins with the highest rank and the highest Step as God. Could there be any step higher than this step? Could there be any name or anyone any higher than God Himself enthroned in the heavens? This is where this text begins. Who, although He existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped. This leads to the second step, which is man. Step number one, God. Step number two, man. And him who has existed forever throughout all eternity past as God, without ever giving up any of His deity, but taking to Himself fullness of humanity, He became in the incarnation the God-man. Not half God and half man, but fully God and fully man. That is the second step down. And what a step down that is to go from being God to being man while retaining the fullness of His deity. And so we read in verse 6, that although He existed in the form of God, He did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped. He did not cling to all of the free exercise of His authority in the heavens as being equal with God. Verse 7 says, but emptied Himself. It's the Greek word kenosis. Emptied. Kenosis. And this means... Not that He surrendered any of the attributes of deity. Rather, it means that He took upon Himself the limitations of humanity and veiled His pre-incarnate glory and voluntarily chose not to use all of the divine prerogatives that belong to Him as God. He emptied Himself of the prerogatives that were His 
to use the fullness of his deity. And so step number two is man. Step number one, God. Step number two, man. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And it goes on to say at the end of verse 7 that He was made in the likeness of men. He became like you and me in every way, yet without sin. He was subject to human weakness. He was subject to human temptation. He was born of a woman under the law. And He became like us in order to save us. He came and got into our skin that He might take our place upon the cross. Third step down, number three, is bond servant. First God stepped, it, stepped down to become a man, yet He stepped down yet further to become a bondservant. He did not become just any man of high rank. He did not come as a king. He did not come as a prince, nor as a governor, nor as a judge. But He stepped down yet lower and took upon Himself the form of a lonely bondservant in servitude and in submission, and He existed to do the will of His Father. What a step down it was just to become a man. But not just the greatest of men on the outside with privileges, but He became a bondservant. Mark 10, verse 45, For the Son of Man has come not to be served, but to serve and to give His life a ransom for many. Were that not enough, there is yet a fourth step downward, and it is the word obedience. As we continue to read, it says in verse 8, being found in appearance as a man. And let me say, that appearance was not that of outward beauty and, and regality. He took upon the appearance of a man, of one of of earthenness and roughness, and as men looked upon Him, they hid their face. And it says, He humbled Himself by becoming obedient. There's the fourth word, obedient. As He came in the form of a bondservant, He denied Himself and pursued the will of His Father, and He was obedient perfectly to the will of the Father. He came not to do His own thing, but the will of the Father, and He lived a life of absolute self-denial and obedience. Fifth word is the word death. He humbled Himself to the point of death. Not merely a bondservant who came down to serve for a while and then was taken back up to glory. Not merely one who came and served for a while and was obedient, but he was obedient to the point of death. This is absolutely shocking. The Son of God died. Not merely that God came down to the earth to show us in the form of a bondservant what God looks like, but as He came, He gave Himself unto death. And it was a death that was an ignominious death. It was a sin-bearing death that was designed by God before time began. And then the sixth word that I want you to note is the word cross, even death on a cross. I said seven words, only six, excuse me. Even death on a cross. So many different ways He could have died. But God chose the one way that was the most despicable death. 
God chose the one way that was the most despised death. It was a death so ignominious that no Roman citizen under the law of Caesar was allowed to be crucified. No matter how heinous the crime, crucifixion was so gruesome that no citizen of the empire could be subjected to death on a cross. It was reserved only for the Jews. It was reserved only for foreigners. It was reserved only for their enemies. It was reserved for the vilest, the darkest, and the worst of criminals, the scum of society. Galatians 3 verse 13 says, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. This is the humiliation of the Lord Jesus Christ as He humbled Himself, beginning in the heights of heaven as God, coming to this earth as man, yet in the form of a bondservant, yet obedient to the will of God, living a life of self-denial, yet it was a life that led to death, a gruesome death. It was a death upon a cross. And it was this death upon a cross that has become our means of salvation. For it was in His death upon the cross, as we have said time and time again, Jesus died in our place. It was lifted up upon that cross and our sin was laid upon Him. I don't understand how that could happen. But the Bible so clearly testifies beyond the shadow of any doubt that it was our sins He bore and our iniquities that He carried as He died upon the cross. And no one ever humbled Himself as much as did the Lord Jesus Christ down, 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 lower, 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 went the Lord Jesus Christ. What does He say in verse 5? Have this very same attitude in yourself. How each one of us must humble ourselves beneath the mighty hand of God and deny ourselves any rights that we would feel that we would have and recognize what rights does a dead man have. And so humble ourselves to the will of God that we would live not for what we would desire to do in our flesh, but to live in obedience to the will of God in order to please God, and that we would do this and live in such a way until we come to the end of our days in death. Our Savior has not called us to do anything that He has not already done Himself. And this is not a morbid way to live. It is a mighty way to live. For the more we give ourselves away to the will of God, it comes back to us one hundredfold. And he who would keep his life shall lose it. And he who loses his life for the sake of Christ shall find it one hundred time, times fold. And so this is the humiliation of Christ. And as we come to the Lord's table tonight, we are reminded that He came all the way down to Golgotha, to Calvary, there where He died such a despicable death upon a cross for us.
There is nothing that God will ever call upon you to do that would require you to lower yourself any more than what Jesus Christ has already humbled Himself in dying upon a cross for us. And we must be willing to go anywhere, anytime, pay any price, and do anything within the will of God because we now too are bondservants of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're not our own. We've been bought with a price. Therefore, let us glorify God with our body. And let us say, as the Lord Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, not my will, but thy will be done. Well, I want you to note the exaltation in verses 9 through 11. No one ever humbled themselves more than the Lord Jesus. And so, therefore, no one has ever been more highly exalted than the Lord Jesus Christ. The extent to which anyone will ever be exalted is in direct proportion to the extent to which they humble themselves. If you humble yourselves but a little, you shall be honored but a little. If you humble yourself in great fashion, you will be exalted by God in great fashion. And Jesus Christ humbled Himself more than any man who has ever lived in the history of the world there For God has highly exalted him more than any man who has ever walked this earth. And be assured that to the extent in this life that you humble yourself before God, God will highly exalt you. Notice the exaltation of the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 9, Therefore, Therefore, pulls together verses 6 through 8 as if to say as a result of this self-denying humility unto obedience in the will of God, therefore also, meaning also, it's not the end of the story, also God highly exalted Him. Not merely exalted Him, but has highly exalted Him We know that that exaltation is so high that He is enthroned at the highest place of the entire universe at the right hand of God the Father. Think about this exaltation as He died in ignominy, as He died in defeat before the watching eyes of the world. There upon that cross, God took Him from there. And God exalted Him and bestowed on Him the name which is above every name. So that at the name of Jesus, and this name is a real name. This name He will tell us in verse 11. This name is the highest name in the universe. This name is a name that is so high that it pulls rank on the entirety of the created order. It is a name that is so high, verse 10, that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. Of those who are in heaven, and that refers to the entirety of the angelic host, myriads of myriads in heaven, as well as redeemed saints who are already around the throne of God, every one of them will bow their knee in submission forever and ever to Jesus. And those on earth referring to demonic spirits that are loose upon the earth. It refers to believers who are upon the earth as well as unbelievers. You see, in the final day, there will be no atheists. Every knee will bow. And not only even of those on the earth, but he says at the end of verse 10, and under the earth. And under the earth, that refers to the bowels of hell itself. And in hell, there are fallen 
spirits so foul, so fiendish, that a portion of them have already been consigned to the, to the hottest part of hell. And during the tribulation in Revelation chapter 9, it shall be opened and they shall be loosed one last time during the tribulation. And also in hell are those who have died without Christ. Whether they heard the name of Christ or whether they did not hear the name of Christ, the fact is they died without Christ. And they now are rightly and justly suffering for their sins in the flames of hell. And even those in hell, this says, they too will bow their knee in homage and in submission, and they will utter these words in verse 11. In all of the created order, whether angels and redeemed saints in heaven, or believers or unbelievers or demons on the earth, or unbelievers or fallen spirits in hell, the entirety of creation brought under the Lord Jesus Christ, and in submission to Him, all of creation reconciled to this position of submission under the Lord Jesus Christ, verse 11, that every tongue will confess, whether saved or lost, elect angels or fallen angels, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is, and here is the name, that God has bestowed upon Him. It is the name that is above every name. It is the name that is synonymous with deity. It is the name that means that He possesses supreme authority. It is the name that means that He alone has the right to reign and rule over all the universe and over all creation forever and ever. It is the name Lord. Curios. And in this day and time, when one mentioned the word curios, there was no mistaken as to the meaning of the word curios. In the Roman Empire, there was one curios. He was Caesar. And Caesar and Caesar alone ruled over his empire of tyranny. And Caesar decided where armies would march and which kingdoms would be annexed and where someone would live and what someone would do to work. All authority was invested in the empire And Caesar. The Christians understood that. They had been put to the test time and time again. Who is Lord? And once a year, every citizen of the Roman Empire would be called upon to pledge their allegiance to Kyrios. And they would stand with all of the other citizens, and in an attempt to unite the Roman Empire, emperor worship was designed by Nero. To unite the entire empire. And every knee in the empire will bow before Caesar, and every citizen will take a pinch of incense and place it upon the altar and say, Caesar S. Curios. Caesar is Lord. And as Paul writes this, it comes with dramatic impact and effect. For Paul overturns the declaration of man. And Paul says in this, not Caesar as Curios, Christos, 
Es Kyrios. Christ is Lord. And every knee in the empire, and everyone in heaven and on earth and under the earth, every knee will ascribe homage to the King of kings and to the Lord of lords, Jesus Christ. And God has highly exalted Him and given Him this name because He humbled Himself more than any man. The sin of the devil before the throne of God. Isaiah 14, Ezekiel 28. I will, I will, I will, I will. And He was cast down. I will ascend to the heights of heaven. I will exalt myself above the stars of God. I will exalt, exalt myself above God. And He was cast down to the earth. And one day, He will be consigned to the bottomless pit forever and ever. The Lord Jesus Christ took the total opposite route. He sought not to exalt Himself. According to the eternal decree of God within the Trinity, the Son was commissioned to redeem His people from their sins. And Jesus said, I will, I will, I will humble Myself lower and lower and lower. And He gave Himself to the will of God. Even death on a cross. It is because of this we come to the Lord's table tonight that we would never forget how great was His humiliation. How great was His condescension. How great was His descent downward to Calvary's cross. And as we will hold the cup and as we will hold the bread in just a moment, understand that God says to every one of us, have this same attitude in yourself, which was also in Christ Jesus. May we submit to one another. May wives submit to their husbands. May husbands submit to the role that God has assigned to them in the home. May we seek what is pleasing and best for one another. May we seek not our own preference, but that which is for the common good. May we be a church in which everyone in the church is seeking to most humble themselves to each other. And it is only in that act shall any of us be exalted by God and used in His glorious kingdom to have eternal impact and eternal influence in this world with the gospel of Christ. Let us pray. Our Father, we thank You for commissioning Your Son to come into this world. And we understand that You want that truth to be ever before us. And we have considered that tonight. We thank You that You have commissioned Your Son to die upon a cross for our sins. And we understand the gravity of that descent the enormity of that humiliation. As God became man and became a bondservant and obeyed unto death upon a cross. And Father, we thank You that You have exalted Him to Your right hand. And we long 
for that day when the entire universe will be brought into this place of submission before the throne of the Lord Jesus Christ and how our hearts will glory for our Savior to receive the honor that is due His name alone. And finally, in that last day, not that everyone will be saved, but that from every lip there will come this declaration, Jesus Christ is Lord. Father, we long for that day because we are jealous for the honor that belongs to our Savior alone. As we live our life upon this earth, may we live in submission to the Lordship of Christ. And may we assign to Him the place which He rightfully deserves, that place of Lord over our lives. Lord, we glory in this truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The following has been an audio recording of Christ Fellowship Baptist Church and is under the direct copyright of Christ Fellowship Baptist Church. All recordings may be used freely for the ministry and application of the Word of God. However, written permission must be obtained from Christ Fellowship Baptist Church before any recording is broadcast or redistributed in any form. In no way should this recording be disseminated without the express consent of Christ Fellowship Baptist Church.